What's up, wall fans, common sensors, social media world, and of course, podcast consumers. Welcome to the video feed for episode 23 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell to the Wall. And of course, me, your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. We're coming off the fourth anniversary episode. Got some good feedback off of that, uh, but we are kind of back to our normal format here, I guess you could say. Uh, if, if there is such a thing as a normal format for Go Tell to the Wall, I don't think there is, but I, whatever that normal is, that's what we're back to uh, today. So, that being said, let's just get into it. Who wants to do Go Tell it to the Wall? Tell it to the Wall. Go Tell it to the Wall. Tell it to the Wall. Oh. Wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, welcome to episode 23 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell It to the Wall. I am, of course, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, and we've got an action-packed show for you today. Uh, as usual, we kick things off with our social plugs. You can keep up with the podcast during episodes, after episodes, four episodes, whenever you so please, and you can do that in multiple locations. One of those would be facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. Pretty easy to remember. Facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. Uh, also, on YouTube, you got to go there. You got to search go tell it to the wall. We don't have a custom URL there, but if you search go tell it to the wall, you will see, you will see our lovely channel there. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, which apparently if you're a broadcaster influencer, you have to say that 50 times throughout a video. I say it once, hit that notification bell. You're going to be up to date on anything and everything that passes through YouTube. That's where you're going to find all of our live video feeds. We also post them on Facebook. So if, if you're not a YouTube user, you can get them on Facebook. If you're not a U Facebook user, you can get them on YouTube. Uh, but you're also going to find all of our beer reviews, our parenting playlists, our mental health Mondays, all that great stuff right there on YouTube. Uh, so make sure you are subscribed. And of course, my personal Instagram account, which is SoCalSean. I'm going to go ahead and mention the Twitter. We haven't mentioned it in a long time. And it's funny because we don't use the Twitter much. But for those of you watching the video, uh, I still have our Twitter handle like up behind me. <laughs> just one of those things uh and and I, I don't know maybe maybe we'll change that out here soon it's it's on our our our, our uh bleh, wall supporters uh board over here you don't actually see the supporters you just see a uh, a uh a, a twitter handle that we don't use anymore but really if you want to at tell the wall pod you can follow at tell the wall pod sometimes i don't know sometimes we use it uh, rarely you're, you're better off with facebook instagram and youtube and of course even more importantly would be sean o'rourke live.com that one is on the board and you can see it there if you're watching the video that is still Often used, often updated, uh, and and definitely your one-stop shop for everything that is Go Tell It to the Wall and everything that is Sean O'Rourke Live. You're going to find not only links to all those, th those other platforms I just mentioned, uh, but photos you won't find anywhere else, videos, all kinds of great stuff up there. Uh, and that's where you'll find a link to our Patreon campaign. If you want to support us financially and have the means to do so, please do it through the Patreon campaign. Uh, even if you don't want to support us, go on Patreon, check out lots of other people that have Patreon campaigns uh, up there. In fact, let me give a little shout out that doesn't even have to do with my Patreon. Uh, it's finally cooling off here in Los Angeles. It's still warm. It's still warm, but because I have the air conditioning running in the studio, uh, and the studio is actually, it's funny, the studio is the coldest place in the house, uh, especially when the door's closed, and it's, I, I realized that as I was working on our air conditioner, like, whenever my air conditioning broke, like a month ago, and, and I'm up in the attic, and I go, oh, that's why it's always so cold in the studio, is because my my system is, like, just above the closet behind me here, so it's the closest to the HVAC system. It gets super cold in here, and then because my daughter's room is, like, not the furthest, but it's it's further back in the house, to keep that cool, it's, like, freezing in here, refrigerator status, and then normal temperature in the other bedrooms. But I am wearing a sweatshirt today. And speaking of Patreon, I got a little tangented there, but speaking of Patreon, uh, one person to check out on Patreon would be Jen Pop, Jen Pop of the Bomb Pops. She actually uh, was kind enough to participate in a, a live stream with The Fest last week doing some acoustic songs. Uh, Neil from the Bomb Pops also hopped on there to, to have some fun and, and, and commiserate on some stories and, and how they're missing tours. But I bring that up because I am, not only should you check out Jen's page. Uh, Patreon page. Become one of her patrons if you, if you have the means to do so. Uh, but I'm actually wearing Jen's sweatshirt. Shout out not only to Jen Pop, but also to Stupid Rad Merch. Uh, and it's funny, if, if you're on the video, it, it's a little blocked, but this is the new the newest uh, Jen Pop sweatshirt. It's got her little logo there. You can also see her logo on the wall behind me with all the other band stickers. Uh, but shout out to Jen Pop and, of course, Stupid Rad. I, I 
like brand new sweatshirt. It's fall. I just feel so, and it's not even that cold, but I just feel cozy because it's like all soft and new. You know, I have some sweatshirts that are like super old, and I still wear them. But when you have a new, the happiness is a new sweatshirt, <laughs> like a new hoodie, I should say, if you're into that type of thing. I love my hoodies. I have too many. My wife gives me a hard time, and I'm still like, well, no, I I need to get another hoodie. And the funny thing is, they're all black. <laughs> like I have like 20 black hoodies, and then like. One blue one, one gray one, one purple one, one red one. <laughs> I know it's too much. It's too much. But that's just my entire wardrobe is basically T-shirts, jeans, sweatpants, and hoodies. And the sweatpants for, are for at home. Anyway, I digress. Uh, also, check out our merch our merch link right there on SeanO'RourkeLive.com. Uh, you can check out Stupid Rad. Get yourself a nice new sweatshirt now that it's cooling off, uh, especially from Gen Pop, but among other bands. Uh, and also, check out our merch. You can get yourself a Go Tell It to the Wall sweatshirt right there on uh on our merch site which you can link directly from seanoworklive.com and i swear i know i've been saying this for a few weeks uh there is a new design coming and it, it should be up there this week this is a new design uh many of you if you especially if you know me personally but even if you don't know me personally you've probably seen we we have a new version of a a sean O'Rourke logo that's that's coming out and that's going to be available on the merch site as well We're probably gonna make some stickers have all kinds of fun with that so keep an eye out for that stuff uh, speaking of stickers, I've got tons of stickers here, and Tom, I know I need to, I, I just, I gotta, I gotta put it on my to-do list, but I, I, owe, I owe some patrons some stickers, and honestly, if you're out there, and you just want a couple stickers, even if you're not a patron, uh, send me a message through seanworklive.com, and, uh, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll just, I'll send some pictures, or pictures, stickers your way, not getting any pictures, don't get excited there, uh, send some stickers your way, uh, so that you can, you can share the, the common sense that is uh, go tell it to the wall. All right, Halloween. We are fast approaching Halloween. Uh, we are going to do, it, it, if you've been with us since the beginning or even the past like two years, year or two, uh, you, you know we do this. But every year we do a, a little bit of a Halloween episode. And it's not craziness. It's more uh, just our normal format with a, with a bit of a Halloween theme to it. This year is going to be interesting because Common Sense Sundays is a newer thing we've done. Uh, so... Prepare yourselves. Next Sunday, next Common Sense Sunday is going to be to be our official annual Halloween episode. It's actually like almost a full week before Halloween, but because of how the calendar falls this year, uh, we're we're going to be doing it that like far before Halloween. And uh, if you're watching the video and, and and you've not seen Halloween episodes before, yeah, that weird thing behind me hanging there, that is kind of like my official Halloween costume, among other things. Uh, that's that's my Muppet hoodie, custom made. You cannot purchase one of those, so don't be jealous. Don't email me asking how you can buy one of those. You gotta you gotta have them custom made. That's the thing. You gotta have a mother that can sew and can custom make, make you an animal Muppet hoodie. All right, but uh, as I said, prepare next week. And if you are new to the podcast, uh, there is an annual photo that gets posted. And uh, for those of you not familiar with it, if you are new or you don't even remember from last year, I will say some of you out there did not model Halloween costumes as a kid. And it shows. So prepare yourself for that annual post that will be coming your way. Uh, and, and we exemplify the, the zero shame that I have uh, in my life. Uh, and just a reminder, United States, everyone in the U.S., vote now. We are just over two weeks away from the presidential election. If you're in California, you should have already received your ballot. I know many other states have, have sent out their mail-in ballots. I'm, not, I'm in California, so I've been following that a little more closely. i got my mail-in ballot sitting there. Going to go drop it in the box this week, but make sure you vote. I'm not going to sit here and tell you who to vote for. Just vote. This is this is a very important election in the U.S. Uh, really, I, and I'm sure people even around the world are watching this more closely than they have other presidential elections in the past because of how much hin hinges on this particular election. I don't care who you vote for. Just vote. I mean, deep down, yeah, I do care because you shouldn't be voting for an orange megalomaniac, but just vote. Vote. And down ballot, too. Local stuff. There's lots of other important things. I've said this since I was a kid, uh, you know, and I've said before, we're going to post that story about about my kind of my voting story. But that was something that bothered me as a kid. Everyone goes out there just for presidential elections. And it's like, you, you know, now, yes, this presidential election is on another level of important. But for a long time, it didn't it, it almost didn't matter who the president was. Yes, you should vote for who you want to be president. But it's the local stuff that matters so much more. So keep an eye on that, too, especially. And I'm sure it's happening in other states. But in, in California, there's a lot of important stuff. And there's a lot of like I'm, I'm coming from the marketing industry. I'm going to call it false advertising. I'm not going to use this fake news term, false advertising. Uh, and I will say last thing I'm going to say on that until, you know, next week or the week after when we talk more about voting is when you see all these ads on television you know, prop 22, prop whatever. The important thing is to always look at the fine print at the end 
And you can tell who it, they have to tell you who's paying for this. For example, here in California, we have a prop. I, and I can't remember the exact thing. I, I trust me. I have my voter guide and stuff. It's 22 or 23. It has to do with uh, with Uber and Lyft. And they have this ad campaign out saying, like, talking of all these drivers that want to want this to pass so that they can continue being independent contractors. I don't want to get into details on it. it, it like, I, you need to educate yourselves and 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 vote how you think. But this is just an example of that fine print at the end of ads. Uh, this ad campaign that, that is promoting that proposition uh, so that drivers can stay independent contractors and not get all of the benefits that, that we voted for them to get uh, recently is actually paid for by Uber and Lyft. That's all you have to do. You don't even have to pay attention to these commercials a lot of times. And I'm, I'm not saying stick yourself in a box, but a lot of times you can you can tell, it, regardless of what's in the commercial, if that's something you support. Like me, for example, I'm not again, I'm not trying to convince you otherwise. I am a huge union supporter. Huge. If I see a political ad up there and it's, it's paid for by the American worker, like unions, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look closer at that. If it's paid for by corporations, I'm going to look closer at that. Keep that in mind. And I'm, I know this is happening in other states, but in California, it is definitely happening, and that's just one example. So vote, vote, vote. you got a little over two weeks. You can vote early. You can vote day of. Just do what you have to uh, and, and, and get out there and make your voice heard. For the love of God, make your voice heard. And I just want to take a moment here uh, to thank everybody. Once again, we had a lot of good feedback from the fourth anniversary episode, and it's a huge thank you. I know we thanked everybody individually on the last episode, but this is just a blanket thank you to everybody out there. Uh, the, the kind words that are sent and the encouragement mean more than I can ever, ever express to you. Uh, this is a silly thing, and it's free, and it seems easy. And, to, and you know, to me it is pretty easy, but it's also, it, it can be stressful and nerve-wracking, and it's a bang-your-head-against-the-wall situation at times where I'm just like, uh, uh, this is, you know... And that support, uh, it means means the world and more than I can ever express to everyone out there uh, who's been listening to us for four years, three years, two years, one year, two weeks, whatever it is, uh, it, it is it, it, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. All right, let's move on to some digital trends here. That's right, digital trends, some stuff trending around the internet, social sites, digital platforms. Uh, one of those would be hashtag side effects of getting old. Hashtag side effects of getting old. This is one of those comedic ones that you can enjoy. Uh, d depending on your age. I, I, I think I started getting old as a teenager. I did not take good care of my body, and I was an athlete. And, and, and especially nowadays, it's just... So, so for me, hashtag side effects of getting old is everything hurts all the time. All the time. And in addition to that, and I know... Uh, because I'm I'm part of a group on Facebook like punk rock dads and and it comes up every once in a while the guys like oh I finally had to do it had to get some cheater glasses and I've worn glasses for oh my gosh over 20 years I've I've had to wear them for a long time but I have noticed uh, as as each year passes I need them more and more like it used to be I need them because my eyes would get I needed them because my eyes would get tired now I I sometimes I can't even read a book to my kid without my glasses and I'm like oh god. Getting a little older here, getting a little older, but that's okay. So check that one out. Hashtag side effects of getting old. Have fun with it. There's nothing wrong with getting old. We can make jokes. We can have fun with it. Uh, same with this one. Hashtag manly ways to lose weight. And I will say, I, I am not a fan of toxic masculinity. And just and a little, little personal story time. For some reason, and I don't know if it's because I'm from, like, pretty much from San Diego. You know, I wasn't born in San Diego, as you know, but I'm pretty much from Southern California. I, I, I've just never known what it is, but I get, and, and I was an athlete as a kid, uh, and maybe it's a San Diego thing that I get lumped in with, like, you know, nothing wrong with the military, but military people and stuff, and kind of lumped in with that toxic masculinity, which is funny because I just never really actually, I've never been that way, it's just, and it's not even me trying to defend myself, it's like, okay, I no problem, if you think I'm, like, that that's fine, I, I have no problem, but it's just not me, um, so I don't mean this in a toxic masculinity way, I thought this could be funny could be funny again hashtag manly ways to lose weight and the extra funny thing is i came across this one and the first thing i thought of as a joke but such a stereotype is carrying grocery bags and sure enough i click on this and like the first three are like carrying grocery bags and it's all like gifts of a guy carrying grocery bags uh this is something i'm absolutely guilty of i have i've literally like hurt nerves in my fingers because i was like no one trip just one trip and i'll like <laughs> end up with an injury go to the doctor how'd you hurt your hand carrying grocery bags <laughs> like, can you imagine which is kind of what, like that is also part of getting getting old I guess too is because I have tendonitis in my elbow 
And I've had people ask me, like when I've been on video calls and stuff, or neighbors that are passing by, like, oh, what'd you do to your elbow? Because I have an elbow brace that I put on, <laughs> you know, thinking I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, no, I was working out or, you know, doing this. Pull. No, I have, I have tendonitis from editing too much on the computer. <laughs> Getting old. Uh, the other one I will say with hashtag manly ways to lose weight. And again, this it, you don't have to be a man. But I have learned, I actually stepped on the scale the other day. I have, I, I have lost about 25 pounds in the past few months without really doing a lot. I know I've talked about it. I've started doing a little working out with the extra time I have, especially while my kid naps. Uh, but outside of that, I haven't really done much. I, I drink. <laughs> I, I'm a bit of a drinker. Um, but I have one thing I can say is, is an air fryer. I think I've mentioned this before, but it, once I realized how much I'd lost, that is one of the biggest differences I've made. I love French fries, and I've actually been eating more French fries now than I had really pre-pandemic. But the difference is they're air fried, and they're not fried in a bunch of oil. And I'll tell you, the taste is really, it's not different. It's not different. You get some frozen fries, throw them in the air, boom, so good. Uh, so many things you can throw in the air fryer. Highly recommend that. That's good. That's that's a manly way to lose weight, I guess, because you can still eat some fried foods, you know, in a stereotypical way. I know women eat fried foods, too. Trust me, my wife loves the French fries out of the air fryer, too. My kid loves the French fries out of the air fryer. Tater tots. Oh, tater tots in the air fryer. So, so good. Uh, so highly recommend one of those. And I will say, despite the fact that I was an athlete, this is always this is a common misconception when it comes to something like hashtag manly, manly ways to lose weight. Uh, so I was a triathlete for a long time. I mean, I still am. It's just been a while since I've raced. And you can, I got a little thingy up here from my very first race. And uh, I, I, this would come up a lot because I worked out like crazy. And for me, the working out, you know, and I love triathlon. The, the adrenaline rush you get from, from a race, tri it's so much fun. I, like, I highly recommend it. Um, even if you don't like swimming, you, it, if you like one of the disciplines, highly recommend even trying out the other ones. I was not a swimmer. Uh, I was not a cyclist, uh, I, but I was, a, I was a runner. I was an, kind of an elite track athlete in high school, I guess. And, uh, but I took on the other two, th and it was just so much fun. Just so much fun. So, you know, that's something you're looking to do. But what I will say is as much as I love the competing and the adrenaline, um, and it, did ha I, it has helped me lose weight. I mean, I've had points in my life where I was overweight and had to, there, there's been points, in, there was one point in my adult life where I lost 40 pounds over the course of a few months and just, just training, training. But because of that, so many people would say to me, oh, you got to check out this new, like, healthy bar or whatever, this, this like, smoothie thing. And I, every time I had to say, I, I really appreciate that, but I actually, I actually work out like crazy like this so that I can go eat a cheeseburger and fries. Like, uh, you know, if, if I was eating those things, I wouldn't work out like this. <laughs> That's, and it's not because I'm, like, vain or anything. It's just, I don't know, that keeps me from being obese because I like eating terrible, terrible foods and drinking beer. Oh, if, if beer wasn't so bad, like, if it wasn't so filling, oh, man. I, and, and I don't understand how people drink, like, a 12-pack of beer. Because I get through, like, when I was younger, one thing. But nowadays, I get through, like, three of them, and I'm like, oh, I am full. But mainly ways to lose weight. All your different ways, I guess. All right, also trending on the social platforms right now is hashtag Zoom codes. I actually saw a couple of Twitter accounts uh, dedicated to Zoom codes. If you're not familiar with this, uh, people are, are po like, posting Zoom codes for people's Zoom meetings or whatever so that they can be crashed and you can get into the Zoom meeting. Uh, I don't really see the appeal here. This It's just so silly. Like, do people really have nothing better to do uh, other than try and, like, crash other people's Zoom meetings? It's so it's just so strange to me. But that's a thing that we do nowadays because social media is terrible and we come up with dumb ideas all the time. Uh, at least it's not a dumb challenge, but it ranks up there with the dumb challenges, I'd, I'd say. Uh, so keep your Zoom code safe. I don't use Zoom. I've used it a few times. Um, in fact, we used Zoom with Something's Not Right Studios to do some collaborative stuff there. But I, I, I'm not familiar with setting it up, so I, I don't know how that works. But apparently Zoom codes, boom, you protect your Zoom code. I just, technology, man. Just get ready for the robot overlords. All right, last one here. Hashtag OCD Awareness Week. We're actually finishing up uh, OCD Awareness Week. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Awareness Week. Uh, I'm pointing that out, but we're going to talk more about that in mental health. That one is extremely important to me because that is the specific mental illness that I suffer from, uh, really suffer from greatly at times, can be very debilitating. Uh, so we're going to talk about that in mental health, and it's going to be a little bit of my tirade that that I kind of do every once in a while and point out the differences between OCD and being clean. Because for some reason, people don't understand that there's a difference. 
and they feel like they can just make fun of OCD, but we'll get there when we get to mental health. COVID updates. <laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> it's so funny to finally see some karma coming back around. Yes, I know the Orange Menace got it and we're like karma, but he had the best medical care on the face of the earth. So, you know, you knew he was kind of knew he was going to be fine. But karma. Dan Mullen, the head coach of the University of Florida football team, uh, recently got a positive test for COVID. He is he is has come down with with COVID with the coronavirus. And the reason I laugh a little bit and I say it, karma is a thing is the University of Florida. Uh, and without getting into details because nobody cares, they they lost a football game last weekend. College football is played like every Saturday for the most part. And, and afterward, Dan Mullen had said that he wanted to. Pack the swamp in finger quotes. For those of you not familiar, the swamp is what they call the football stadium there in at University of Florida, which is in Gainesville, which is swamp area. I'm actually pretty, pretty darn familiar with Gainesville. Spent spent quite a bit of time there as a kid. Uh, so it's called the swamp, and he wanted to pack this 90,000 seat stadium so that fans could help the team win. Well, sure enough, like two days later, outbreak on the University of Football team, like. Positive test, positive test, positive test. They were up to like 20-something, I believe. And then, sure enough, a couple days later, the guy who just didn't care about health codes or anything else and just wanted fans to go crazy in, in his in his stadium has COVID. So, Dan Mullen, pack the swamp my ass, and karma is a thing. Remember that. Remember that. All right, Disneyland rally. There's a rally. I think this was happening yesterday at Disneyland. It might still be going on. Uh, they had a rally outside of Disneyland, essentially a protest, uh, and it was em employees, former employees, and, and Disneyland fans all out there protesting to get the park open. I get it. I really do feel for for everybody at Disney that was laid off. <laughs> it's, we've talked about this before. Uh, I, I worked at Disney for eight years. Uh, I was laid off. I, I was laid off basically because they destroyed an entire division of Disney Channel, and, and there was nothing I could do, and I... I, you know, respectfully said, peace out. I'm, I'm good. I've had enough of Disney, uh, but I've been there. I, I understand how it feels, especially when you've dedicated your career to Disney. So many people are Disney people and they just want to work for Disney. I was never a Disney person. It was just a decent place to work in, in marketing. So, so I feel for these people. The problem is the blame is it's always misguided. It's always misguided. Disneyland's in Orange County. It's in Anaheim. We've had problems in Orange County with people not caring about mask mandates or any of those things. So that's number one. Number two, which is even more important here, is knowing the greed that is Disney. Knowing the greed that is Disney. The Disney execs are still making plenty of money. They're still making plenty of money. And this is par for the course at Disney. And I said this when these layoffs happened. And people ask me about it. I often get these questions just from friends, you know. Oh, wow, another Disney layoff. You know, what do you think? And I was like, no, this is just their excuse. This is something that would have happened anyway. They're constantly laying people off. And instead of just chalking it up to the fact that all of their executives are overpaid, they blame it on the state of California. Completely misguided. No scorn for everyone in Orange County that made this extend this long? No. Let's, let's get mad at the state. And let's get mad at Disneyland itself because apparently we don't realize that executives are the ones making these decisions. Yes, the governor is, 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 has to okay certain things. These are executives making these decisions. Uh, misguided. It's just misguided, and it's absolutely par for the course. Uh, and I will say, this one, the one that's been getting me so much lately, and I think this is, this is why it just continues, is because you have so many people, and this is that COVID exhaustion that we've talked about a few times. You have so many people who are, who are doing their, their absolute best to, to slow the spread of COVID. To slow it. They're wearing masks. They're social distancing and stuff. And then you have people on the opposite end of the spectrum who just are doing none of these things. And if we could somehow find a middle ground, that's where we could really start to, to, to slow the spread and stop the spread. And what I'm talking about is, yes, people have to go out and live their lives. You don't necessarily need to go out and live your life with five different people from other places, go and sit at a table with no masks and, and potentially spread it. Or the one that's been driving me so ridiculously insane lately is I see these pictures. People will post pictures from like events where there's a bunch of people and then nobody's wearing masks. But not only that is there's pictures like everyone's got to get in for their little, you know, selfie or picture. And they're like cheek to cheek, just cheek to cheek, no masks. And we're not talking like, oh, I take a picture with me and my daughter and she's sitting on my lap or something. No, we're in the same house. I'm talking cheek to cheek in an event. 
five, ten different people. And it's like, no, you don't live with all these people. And maybe you're not spreading it, but why risk it? It's not even, it's, it's like, it's like, fuck social distancing. I'm just going to press my face against yours. Jesus Christ. And that's the difference. Let's find this fucking middle ground so that we can be done with this shit. That's where I'm at. I am so exhausted. So exhausted. Oh, man. One more thing in COVID updates. There's a band called Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> yeah, cool band name. Five Finger Death Punch. Stupid. They're like a metal band, I think. I don't even really know their music. I know of them uh, because they're kind of like a Nickelback lit type. And I don't, they're made fun of like Nickelback. They they are like the new lit in the way that they are they are a bit of Trump supporters. And they put out a new new video where they're making fun of people and saying masks are stupid and all this other stuff. And the hypocrisy is ripe with Five Finger Death Punch because you can watch the music video, which I haven't. I'm not giving them any views or listens or anything like that. You watch the music video and say, oh, yeah, no, we should not wear masks. And then if you go on their merch site, they are selling Five Finger Death Punch masks on their site. If you ever need an example of capitalism in the United States of America, that's it right there. <laughs> the hypocrisy is ripe. It's absolutely ripe. But that's that's the world we live in and the country we live in. And sometimes I just want to bang my head against the wall or yell at a wall, which I do quite often yell at a wall, obviously. That's what we do here in the studio every week. Oh, God. Anti-masks, but selling masks. Of course, of course. It's just, it's astounding. I'm like, I'm sipping my, I, I do the talk show thing, like, sipping it like it's coffee. It's just water. <laughs> water in my Go Tell Us The Wall coffee mug. Make sure you pick yourself up a Go Tell Us The Wall coffee mug. Enjoy that common sense on Sunday mornings when we uh, when we get here into the studio. All right, mental health. Mental health. This one is extremely important to me. Uh, OCD Awareness Week, like I said. We were just finishing up OCD Awareness Week. And this one, I always say a lot of times it is ignorance when it comes to people and mental health and, and their understanding of mental illness and mental health. And I'm certain OCD falls into that category. The problem is that obsessive compulsive disorder is kind of like the redheaded stepchild of mental illness and the way that everyone automatically makes fun of it. You know, we learned many, many years ago that you don't, you don't use that R word. I mean, I was a kid in the 80s and 90s. It was, it was used. And then we learned you don't use that. The same, the same way that we, everyone learned in the 90s, you don't use gay as a slur. You know, and we don't go out and say, oh, you know, there's so many different illnesses you don't use as a slur. And even if it's not a slur, like with OCD, a lot of people aren't using it as a slur. They're just using it incorrectly. I can't tell you how many people I still come across to this day that say, oh, I'm just being so OCD today. It's like, oh, you just you have mental illness for a day. You, you just caught it for the day. Ooh, man, I would love to catch OCD just for the day and not have to deal with it in my everyday life for the past 30 plus years of that life. That's the difference. It's, it's educating yourselves. And that's why I talk about it. It is by far one of the toughest. And I, I'm, and I know I'm overly sensitive to it. But it is an education thing. I, I have friends and, and acquaintances that I've, ed, I've literally educated and they've learned, like, no, we don't say that. You know? Or like the Christmas stuff that comes out. The OCD Christmas years ago and still bothers me. Target. Obsessive Christmas disorder. OCD. Can you imagine if you went around going, I got Christmas palsy? That, like, that would be fucking weird, right? Yeah, that'd be weird. But no, we do that with OCD. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a mental illness. And I can tell you stories all day, but you're, you're welcome to talk to my wife one day, too. Who can tell you about just how debilitating it can be. I talked on the last episode how my body shut down a week and a half ago. Shut down. I could barely move. The anxiety that comes with OCD, the obsession with certain thoughts, it's a problem. It's not cleanliness. It's not neatness. It's not organized organization. In fact, I'll tell you, yes, I'm extremely organized, and part of that is my obsessive compulsive disorder. But what a lot of people don't realize is when, and for me, and this is not, it's, it's not black and white, but for a lot of people, it's the same way. When, when my anxiety is really high from my obsessive compulsive disorder, I'm actually not organized anymore. I just want to lay on a couch and not move. That's obsessive compulsive disorder, just like panic attacks. Panic attacks isn't like, oh my God, I'm stressed. I got to take care of this. 
No, panic attack is you literally can't fucking breathe. Your body's shaking. Depending how your body goes through it, that's a panic attack. Or sometimes you even have to get medical attention. Use these terms correctly. And let's end that stigma. Educate others. That, that's what it takes. We've come so far over the past 20 years. We have so much further to go, but we've come so far, and we, all we have to do is just keep educating people. So please, 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 don't ever use that term incorrectly. It's extremely insulting to people like me. Extremely insulting. And once we learn to do better, we can all be better. And that's, that's simply how it is. All right. <sighs> Parenting. I am prepared for fireworks tonight. Possibly. For those of you that aren't sports fans, uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers are playing in Game 7 at like 5 o'clock tonight. 5 o'clock on the West Coast here, so like 8 o'clock East Coast time. Uh, I'm not going to do the math on, on the UK. I know we have a lot of UK listeners. But the funny thing, I always joke about this. I, I ta get tangented here for a sec. Like, I, I, I follow so much stuff in the UK and in like Great Britain and stuff. I just have this block on the time difference. This block on the time difference. And I, I, like, I still have to look at it every... Yesterday there was a Barstool Preachers live stream. We're going to talk about entertainment news. But I always have to double check. I'm like, wait, what? And then I count it. I like look. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, the, oh, oh, okay, that's where we are. I'm, it's like this weird block. <laughs> so apologies. I don't know what time that is there, but it doesn't matter. It's American baseball, and nobody outside of this country really cares much about it. Uh, they don't. I'll be watching the Dodgers. I'll be cheering for the Dodgers. But if the Dodgers win tonight, they are going to go on to the World Series, and we will have a ton of fireworks here in Los Angeles. And, of course, that's going to keep my kid awake. So I'm hoping it's timid, at least to an extent. The, good, the funny thing was... And I will tell you that this happened, la I was prepared for fireworks last Sunday because the Lakers won the NBA championship in basketball. And just to give you an example of, of toddlers, three-year-olds, and, you know, my kid, we talked about this during the summer, my kid was terrified of fireworks. It was really bad, really, really bad, where I'm going to go in a room and cuddle her and stuff and, and comfort her. Well, last Sunday, uh, my wife had actually warned my daughter and said, okay, you know, there might be some fireworks tonight, like before we go to bed, it'll be okay. And sure enough, there were some fireworks, but not as much as expected with a, a professional team winning the championship. Yes, they did start going a little crazy down there in downtown at Staples Center. I'm a little scared if the Dodgers go on to win the World Series, the, the craziness that will happen. Because the Lakers won, it, won their last championship 10 years ago. The Dodgers won their last championship 32 years ago. So I'm going to kind of brace for that. We're not at that point yet. But as I was saying, the fireworks were pretty tame. And this is how much you cannot make a three-year-old happy. Uh, instead of being happy that she wasn't being scared by the fireworks, my three-year-old started to throw a tantrum because she wanted there to be more fireworks. She couldn't see enough fireworks from our back window. It's the joy of parenting. I will say it's still well worth it, but oh my God. Like, yeah, you can't make them happy. You can't. They just can't be happy. I mean, they can't. They cannot, but nope, nope. It's just one thing or the other. Oh, man. Speaking of which, I'm going to share this story with you. My little big sister, Juliet, I mentioned her on the last podcast uh, and how she has a, a, a newborn, still newborn, I guess, technically, it was, you know, a uh, new baby. And uh, because I had talked about heart being on the outside of you and, and shout out to Juliet for, for this comment. Uh, she said, thanks for the shout out. I actually just watched my heart, my heart that's outside. Of me. And I'm, I'm not quoting this directly. I actually watched my heart that's just outside of me puke and, and poop right at the same time. <laughs> it's like, yep. But you still love it. You still love it. It's just part of parenting. Uh, and uh, and that actually reminded me. I want to share this with you. <laughs> it's reminded me of when my daughter was was a newborn, uh, not quite, you know, a couple, probably a couple months old at that point. And uh, we were getting ready to go. We had to take her in for just a doctor's appointment checkup. It must have been three months. I feel like it was like a three month checkup or something. And uh, we had what I, my wife and I used to call them a, a poop catastrophe. So uh, a very big diaper, poop goes flying. And if you've never had kids, like sometimes that poop can get projectile. So we had a big mess and we're like getting ready to go to the doctor. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to pick up my kid and we're cleaning her off and stuff and get her cleaned up, get in the car, go to the doctor. Standing in the exam room, uh, my kid's on the table, you know, I, like I think doctor just come in or doctor's coming in. And my wife turns to me and she goes, what, what's on your shirt? I looked down and was like, that's poop. And it wasn't like a big chunk of, but there was like a little like poop just kind of smeared on my, and I had driven, fortunately the doctor's office is not far from my house. It wasn't in the car for like hours or anything. I'm like, oh, that's poop. 
What, what am I going to do? Fortunately, my wife plans ahead, and at the time, in our diaper bag, we would keep spare clothes for us. Spare shirts, I think. I don't think we had pants in there. Spare shirts only. So here I am changing in the in the exam room of the pediatrician there in, at, at Glendale Pediatrics. Shout out to Glendale Pediatrics. Great place um, if, if you do have kids and, and you're in that area. But that's just part of being a parent. Sometimes you, sometimes you have poop on you. And it's just, you get through it, and you're <laughs> it's okay. And it's so funny because things gross me out like crazy, but when it is your own kid, there's just something, you're like, well, yep, I got puked on, I got pooped on, I got peed on, you know. If, if any, even another kid that wasn't mine, I'd be like, oh, my God. But you're used to it when it's your kid. Uh, and I'm going to save this. i got a little rant that I'm going to save until, like, next week because I think that's important. I've been doing some gardening around the house and trying to prepare make things nicer around the house and I had a little rant there but since we're going a little over on time I'm going to skip that one and move on to some entertainment news that's right entertainment news a couple cool things going on uh, Barstool Preachers had a live stream yesterday if you didn't see it you've missed it so it's not something you can go check out uh, but you should of course be checking out the Barstool Preachers especially their most me- recent no, not their most recent music video. Their second to most recent music video uh, for When This World Ends. You can see my lovely face on there as well as uh, some wall supporters, some wall fans, and uh, obviously lots of Barstool Preachers fans. It was very short. Uh, they actually to, they, they did a socially distanced concert there in Brighton, which is in, uh, in the UK, Brighton, England. And uh, they use this huge venue, and they let like 200 people in, but it's it's a venue for like thousands of people, so they're able to do this, and they fortunately live-streamed it. Uh, shout out to all the guys that were, hand- guys, women, the people that were handling that that live stream as well as that production, because they were, they were so good. Um, and it was funny, because I was communicating like via the, the chat, they were having trouble with the stream, and then I run a, a fan group for the Preachers on Facebook, so I had people on there, like, and, and I'm trying to you know, connect everybody, and eventually they did get a lot of the tech issues worked out, and it was fantastic, even even seeing them just for 20 minutes and seeing some songs, uh, really, really something I just I absolutely needed uh, for my uh, for my soul, and it made me realize something I've known, but every time I see these, I'm like, oh god, I am so ready for a show, it's like when I was watching Jen uh, do the uh, live stream, Jen Pop do the live stream the other day, and, and they were, t- someone brought up Vagabonies, and I was like, oh my god, that's the last show I was at, and that was like January, Ridiculous. I was supposed to be at the Bomb Pops record release show on March 13th, which is the day that everything went to shit here in uh, in California. I, w- I was scheduled to see the Bomb Pops Friday night, the Bomb Pops again on Saturday night in Orange County, and then uh, Charger on Sunday. All done. All can- like all postponed, actually. I'm still sitting on two of those tickets. The, the Orange County show for the Bomb Pops was not ticketed, so I didn't have a ticket for that, but was planning on going. <laughs> it was just, I'm so ready for live shows. I'm so ready, in fact, that even if it has to be like this, and that would be the Flaming Lips. I'm not a Flaming Lips fan. I Respect to them. Uh, I don't want to get into it, but they're, the Flaming Lips is, is a mental health trigger for me in a certain way. I'm not going to get into details with it, but respect to them. I know they have a, such a huge fan base. Uh, they did a show last week in their hometown of Oklahoma City. They're from Oklahoma City, which is, I never knew that. I just It's so funny because you see a band like Flaming Lips, and it's so dumb and I'm just spoiled because I grew up in Southern California. But you see a band like that, and you're like, well, clearly they're from, uh, you know, New York, San Francisco, or Los Angeles, maybe Chicago, you know. But it's like, no, bands can be from everywhere. <laughs> you're just you're just spoiled because you grew up here, and you know, and and partially grew up in Chicago. So it's I just I'm spoiled, um, but never realized that they're from OKC. And what they did was they actually had uh, all of the guests out there. Uh, they weren't necessarily social distance, but what they did was they put every attendee of the concert in one of those giant bubbles like that you see you know you can go out on the water in them and stuff you've, you've seen these things like they're the giant bubbles that you just stand inside and you're completely you know enclosed in there and then the band was also in giant bubbles so i'm going to be really curious because i'd probably be down for this if this was a way that we we have to go about actually seeing a live show i'd probably be down with this and i'm also curious to see uh, how effective this is going to be you know i'm sure they're going to track you know not in a weird way but they're going to there there's contact tracing uh, for COVID, and so it'll be interesting to see if there's any kind of additional increase because of this, um, and if not, then maybe this is the way the things are going to things are gonna go in the future. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, speaking of things going a certain way in the future, AMC Theaters, you know, that theater chain, it basically has shut down uh, because there's no new movies to put in there, you can, and so many restrictions, everything else, understandably, like, I, I, 
<laughs> I would not be going to a movie theater. Recycled air, you're inside. Like, come on, man. But what AMC is doing, uh, and it's really kind of brilliant to combat this, is they're actually renting out theaters. Uh, so starting at $99, you can rent out your own theater, uh, have up to 20 people in there. I'm curious if that has to be from the same household. I would like to see that be from, like, the same household or family or, you know, two bubbled families, whatever it is. Because 20, while the capacity is so low, you're, you're still inside. It's not like these stadiums that are outdoors and, and you have, you know, 25% capacity. You're, you're inside. So even if you're at, like, 5% capacity, recycled air. So I'm curious to see. But I, I do definitely see the appeal here. Uh, and in fact, depending on what movie you want to screen, snacks, everything else, there, there's other things you can do. But starting at $99, you, you're able to. And if, I'm sure depending where you are, I didn't look exactly which cities are doing this, exactly which theaters. Uh, but you can rent out an AMC theater if, if you'd like to watch a, a movie on the big screen. Uh, totally get it. It's just not for me. It's just, like me personally. I, I, don't, I don't go to the movies a lot anyway. Uh, I, I like being at home. Just that's just how, but that's just me. I see the appeal. Uh, I'm basically the worst film school graduate on the face of the earth. I'm like, I love Kevin Smith. I don't go to movie theaters. <laughs> like, yeah, no, that's I am the worst film school graduate on the face of the earth. Um, no, probably not the worst, but I'm up there as one of the worst. Uh, but I get it. I get it. Go see, go see movies in the theater. For me, I like, I go see, um, Films that I'm like, if, if a Kevin Smith film was coming out, I might go see that. I think the last film that I saw in the theater was Deadpool 2, because I'm obsessed with Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool 2. Uh, at least the last movie that I saw in the theater that I paid for. I did. I have spent a lot of my career not paying for, for movies, because I've worked for a couple major studios there, um, and then in film school, of course. But but for the most part, I you know it's just not for me. But if that's something you're into, check that out, because... Uh, you can rent, have your whole theater. I'm really curious. What would be cool is if you could rent out a theater. Like this I could see the appeal of if I was a gamer. But if you could rent out a theater and hook up like a game system. And you sit in there with like a couple, like five of your friends. And you're just like, I don't know. How, do, how does gaming work? You're like, oh my god. I don't really game much. I play Clash of Clans. Very simple click on things mobile game that's about as far as i can get unless i bust out the nes classic and start playing some legend of zelda or some super mario whoa that's how you know it's a big party night in the o'rourke household when the nes classic or the atari classic comes out it's getting wild it's getting wild in here um <laughs> man and now i'm just i'm gonna complain about this one for a minute it happened i've been waiting for it to happen and i've talked about it on this podcast finally officially happened i went to Went to work out in my backyard on uh, Friday. I think it was Friday, just a couple days ago. And of course, I go to pull up some music. Want to? I connect my my phone to the uh, to, to the Google smart speaker I have outside, and I listen to my music. Well, it happened on Friday, and I was unable to access Google Play Music. In fact, then I walked back inside. My wife's on a conference call, and I walked in. I was like, "Look," because it was like you can no longer. And I was, Grr! and I have already been messing with YouTube Music. But holy shit, is YouTube music bad? It, like, that's the thing. Here's the thing. I have no problem with switching things over. It, for example, Google Play Music had the podcasts in there, and now there's Google Podcasts. Totally fine. Functions fantastically. It, it is no, not a problem. YouTube music does not function anywhere near as well as Google Play Music. Uh, now, if you're a streaming person, it, it's probably fine. It does not function properly for people that own their music. And it drives me absolutely insane, because I've said it before on the podcast, I just want to be able to play my own fucking music through my own fucking phone, and it's music that I've paid for and that I own. Why is this so difficult? Friday was the first day in, like, trying to think of how... Uh, I can't think of how... No, six... Yeah, it's been about six years, because the last time I had an iPhone was when I was at Disney. When I left Disney, I switched from iPhone. Had to have an iPhone at Disney. Switched from iPhone to Android. That's the first time in six years that I went, man, I kind of wish I had an iPhone right now. Because with iPhone, you just you just go on iTunes and you blip, here's my music. Oh, it's on the cool. Let me listen to this. Downloaded without stream. Not paying for streaming services. I've I've spent thousands of dollars on music over over the years. I'm not paying ten bucks a month for some streaming service. I'm just it's not for me. I like listening to my own music. I see the appeal. If I didn't own, you know, forty five days of, of music, then then I would probably do that. But I I'm I constantly buy new music. I got to get on a pre order new Lesson Jake album that's coming out in December. That's actually a hot tip. Get tangented for a sec. Something that never occurred to me because I don't buy a ton of vinyl, but nowadays, uh, with so many, like all the bands are putting out vinyl, and Lesson Jake's a great example. So you can pre order uh, the vinyl for their new album, it's $15. And that comes with a digital download of it. 
And this, it, it was just like this light bulb in my head the other day. I went, why am I not buying more? Because I'm always like, nah, I don't need that vinyl, especially if it's like a brand new album and Less Than Jake. Like, I don't have their old albums on vinyl. But it occurred to me that you're essentially, if you're going to buy the digital version anyway, which I would, I own every single Less Than Jake album. I have since like 1996. Bought them pretty much the week they come out. But if you're going to do that anyway, you may as well spend five extra dollars. This is Less Than Jake just being one example. Maybe not all of them are going to be worth it, but it's $15 a pre-order of the vinyl that comes with the digital download of the album. For five extra dollars, you're basically getting a, a vinyl copy of, of what you would have been getting anyway. This is just a hot little tip, and I'm sure I'm like one of the last people out there to realize it just because I don't buy a ton of vinyl. I, I do buy vinyl, but I'm one of those funny people that like I'll go into the thrift shops and I'm like, oh my God, this is hilarious. Like a song. I, I own Uncle Remus Sings the Blues or something like that because it incredibly racist and I don't listen to it but it is a collectible thing from from Song of the South for those of you familiar with it I paid like 50 cents for it at Goodwill <laughs> it was like oh my god this and just sit, we don't listen to it but it sits there in the record collection just because it's interesting all right uh, we're just about done but I do want to do one more mention I mentioned this last week did not have a chance to do an official preview rundown uh, like we have in the past we will be doing one for the next I, I guarantee it uh, last song playing but last song playing six uh, officially launched on Friday. Uh, we'll share it to the to the Facebook page once again. Uh, make sure you join that group. Check out some new music. Uh, I believe the first rule is in there again. I'm becoming becoming even a bigger first rule as as I list get through more and more of of, of their music. Um, and I believe first rule is in there again. I have to look at the bracket. Like I said, was not able to do a preview this week, so I'm I'm way behind on the specific bands. But check out. Last song playing presented by Wayne Smith Music on Facebook, and uh, and you'll see the last song playing um, six bracket that you can vote on daily and check out, find, discover uh, new bands through their music on YouTube and through the last song playing presented by Wayne Smith Music bracket number six. Oh man, that's gonna do it. I thought we were gonna be short this. This always happens. I'm like, ah, oh, we're gonna be a little short this week, and then like, no, we're we're still over time. That's what we do here at Go Tell It to the Wall, and that's even with even cutting stuff out. Uh, but that that's all just my tangented nature here. And uh, as you know, at Go Tell It to the Wall, we don't need rails. We are constantly off of the rails. Pause for people to think about that one. I guess. <laughs> all right. That's going to do it for us this week. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Also YouTube, uh, head to YouTube, search go tell to the wall, subscribe to our page and my personal Instagram account, which is at SoCalSean. Uh, most importantly would be Sean Work Live.com. Gonna you're gonna find links to all those things I just mentioned as well as stuff that you will not find anywhere else. Uh, please make sure you subscribe, share, tell your friends. Uh, we, we're seeing a steady increase in subscription numbers uh, and we're just trying to continue to increase those. So please make sure you are subscribed as well as as telling your friends. It's free. 100 percent free to subscribe. That's so just hit that button. Burp helps us, uh, helps increase our numbers. All right, on that note of subscribing. Uh, this has been episode 23 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell It to the Wall. I am, of course, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. We will be back next week, same wall place, same wall time, with our annual Halloween episode. And until then, remember, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, no matter what you do, no matter who you're with, no matter where you go, and especially no matter why you are doing it, always, always use common sense.